All right, so back over here in our starter project file, let's create a new geometry container and start to do our one dimensional curve offsetting. So I'm gonna throw it on a geo and we'll just call this basic setups. And let's just dive inside there and throw down a line. So we're gonna be doing all of our offsetting on this line for right now. And I'm gonna just orient the line along the Z axis. So in the direction, I'm gonna put down zero, zero, one. So we've got a line pointing in the Z axis. Now I'm choosing the Z axis instead of the X axis just because the way orientations work in Houdini, it works better to have everything sort of aligned along the Z axis. So that's just a little note about that. The next thing we need to do is add some resolution to our curve, because if we look at our curve points here, you can see that we only have these two right here. We actually need more resolution to actually be able to make this look like a wave. So I'm going to throw down a resample, and we're just going to set this maximum segment length to something really small like 0.001, and that's going to give us a ton of resolution of points that we can push around using our sine wave. Next thing is to actually implement this thing. So we're going to do that using a wrangle. I'm going to throw down a point wrangle. And we'll just wire this in here. And then we'll actually start creating parameters for ourselves so that we can create the sine function. So we're gonna want a float parameter for the A, for the amplitude. So we're gonna say float A equals CHF amplitude, like so. Then we're gonna need a float F, and that's gonna be equal to a channel function for our frequency. Then we're gonna need this one, we're gonna need the O, so we're gonna say float O is equal to a channel float channel offset. And then we're actually not gonna deal with H at all. I'm just gonna leave that by itself. Uh, what we do need to do though, is add these two pi's in here. So I'm just gonna actually multiply two pi right here by our frequency. So frequency times two times dollar pi. See dollar pi is actually a variable that's defined for us. If we look at our aliases and variables right here, under variables, you can see that pi is actually given for us. It's just hard coded into the session like so. So we're going to put a two pi there times our frequency. And then we're also going to do the same thing right below. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it right after our offset like so. The next thing we need to do is actually have our X value. In our world, I'm just going to call this T because that's just sort of the standard that I stuck with. So we're just going to say float T. And we just need to set this equal to the Z component of the position attribute of each point on our curve. So we get that by saying at P dot Z, like so. So now that we have all these here, let's hit this little button and this will create our sliders for us, like so. And right now they just, they don't do anything. So if I wiggle these around, you can see nothing's happening. So let's set those back to zero. And we actually need to now create our function, put this all together. Let's say at P dot Y, since that's what we're going to be modifying here. We're going to be modifying the Y height of this curve at P dot Y equal to a times the sine of two pi F. So that's just going to be F right here, F times T, which is our X value right there. And then we're going to add plus our offset here. So plus O. And let's just get those nice and tight together like that and close that off and hit control enter. Now, nothing has happened, but now if I start to crank up the amplitude and the frequency and the offset, you can see we're starting to get our wave here. So if I increase the frequency to a value of one and the amplitude to say a value of 0.5, let's bring the offset back. You can see that we get our one cycle sine wave that we had before in our example. And if we increase the frequency, we get more and more and more like that. Now you might imagine that we could actually take this and turn it into a weave. So let's actually do that. I'm going to bring the amplitude way down. Let's bring our frequency up to a hundred. So this is actually going to be a very tight little weave here. And so frequency up to a hundred amplitude down to, let's see here, some very tiny amount like 0.02. And I'm just going to turn off the point marker display like that. So we've got this very tight little zigzag going on like so, and we just need to copy it. So I'm going to copy it a hundred times in the X axis. So right before our wrangle right here, I'm going to throw down a copy, copy and transform node like so. And we're going to give it a hundred copies and we're going to translate it by 0.01. So that just fills out the unit square like so. 
You can see we've got a bunch of little a bunch of little sine waves doing their thing. Now we need actually some curves going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to copy this top part right here over by just grabbing all of them and alt dragging to the right. And let's just orient our line now along the x axis. So for this one, we're going to say our direction is pointing in the one zero zero and then the copy direction needs to be moved. So I'm just going to control X and type in a zero here and just set that 0.01 to the Z axis. So now if we bring them both up together, let's merge. You can see we've got lines running in the X direction and we've got waves running in the Y direction. So that's cool. Now, since this all starts to get a little bit hard to see what's going on with just these wires, I like to add a sweep in just to check my work, just to see where things are at. So let's run on a sweep and just wire this in here. And it's throwing an error by default. We just need to set the surface shape to round tube. And you can see that it creates these very large tubes. I'm just gonna bring the radius down to 0.001. And we can zoom back in there and kind of see that it gives us a little bit better of a view of what's actually happening with our weave. But it runs a little bit slow because it's calculating a lot. So if I go up to this point wrangle and slide this offset, you can see that it kind of is taking a little bit for it to update. So when I'm using this sweep mode to view what I'm doing, I actually like to delete a bunch of points that I'm not actually going to need. So let's start on a delete. And we can wire that in above the sweep. And we're just going to crop in on a tinier area around the origin like this. So I'm going to say we're going to be deleting points. And I'm going to just disable this number right here and go to the bounding volume and enable the bounding box. And here you can see that it's actually just deleting this area right around the middle. I'm going to just bring the size down by middle dragging on it like so. And just positioning this kind of around the origin just to get a nice little chunk there that's deleted. And then if I just go up here and say delete non-selected, we get a much tinier chunk. So that when we sweep this, it's not having to think about as many points. And when we scrub this offset, it updates very quickly. So we can see what we're doing a lot better that way. So the next thing we notice is that these tubes are kind of crossing through the alternating direction. If we actually want to move the peak of these curves to be above this point instead of, you know, somewhere in the middle here. So if we go back up to our wrangle and start to crank the offset, you'll see that we're just offsetting by a quarter of a cycle. And so if we look at that, that's about a value of 0.25. We'll just put that in there. And then if we look directly down the horizontal axis, so I'm going to hit space bar four and you can't see anything with our sweep selected, but if we select the merge and click point display mode, and zoom in here, you can actually see that we've offset our curves so that our peaks are right above these points like so, right at 0.25. Hitting spacebar one to switch back to our regular view and our perspective view and turning off point marker display. You can see that the next issue here is that our curves are actually only going above each one of these horizontal lines. So what we need to do is actually make it go over, under, over, under. And to do that, it just means that our frequency needs to be cut in half. So if we bring our frequency down, you can see now we're starting to get that over, under type of weave effect going on here. And that means our frequency needs to actually just be set to a value of 50 because we actually have 100 copies in the other direction. So that's looking good. The next thing we have is an issue where each one of these curves is actually going under and then over, and we actually need them to vary. We need, we need this curve to actually go over and then under and then under and over every other curve as we move across the weave. So we actually can do that by hacking around with our offset here. So here I'm going to just open up a new line here and we're going to say O plus equals. So we're just going to, it's just saying we're going to add whatever the right side of this equation is to whatever our current offset is. And what I'd like to do is actually just take some multiplier on whatever curve number we're on. So each curve is a primitive and we can actually use the primnum attribute to multiply some value to create an offset per curve. So we're going to say at primnum and you might think that that would be equal to some 50% out of phase amount here. And you'd see if I multiply primnum by 0.5, 
you see that that doesn't quite cut it. You can see it is offsetting the curves, but it's not offsetting them enough. And the reason is because we're not actually multiplying this value like two pi the way we are up here with this offset when we added the two pi over here. And this all stems from the unit circle right here because two pi is a full cycle around the unit circle. We actually only need to get 180 degrees out of this phase. So we just need a value of pi. So since 0.5 times 2 pi is just regular pi, over here what we can do is actually just type in dollar sign pi and hit control enter and you can see that our weaves are alternating over under every other one. So that's looking cool. Now let's try and get these horizontal straight lines to go over under as well. We're just going to grab this point wrangle right here and I'm actually going to going to call this weave. We're going to grab this one and I'm going to hold alt and drag it off to the side here. And we're just going to paste it onto this one. Now everything is, it's, it's actually made everything jump up because it's actually looking for movement along the Z axis and everything, all these curves are actually currently pointing down the X axis. So we just need to change this value right here from at P dot Z to at P dot X. And we start to get another type of weave. Now we can see that we're running into another issue here where these are not offset correctly. So let's just grab our offset here and slide it over and we can see that once we get this to a value of 0.75, it's actually alternating for our weave and making things look correct. So if I actually crank up the sweep thickness, that really starts to look like a weave. Now, if I were to go back over to, say, this weave and start to adjust the frequency, you can see that it actually breaks our weave. And this is where it gets kind of fun because we can make this super procedural. We could actually tell this copy to copy the exact number of threads that it needs in order to be able to satisfy the frequency of the opposite direction. So we're going to do that here by just doing some tricky little references and stuff like that. So let's do that. Let's go over to this copy right here, and we're going to want to actually adjust this total number here. What do we want to adjust it by? We're going to want to adjust it by whatever this frequency is right here. So let's just grab this. I'm going to grab this frequency right here and say copy parameter and go over to this copy right here and paste relative reference in here into the total number. Paste relative reference like so. But we actually need it to be times two because if we actually go back up here, you can see that it's no longer copying this all the way across. So we actually want this to be times two. And what we're also going to have to do is modify this spacing. Because if I grab this weave and start adjusting the frequency, you can see that it's adding and removing additional threads in this opposite axis, but we actually needed to adjust the spacing as well. So if I go here and we know that we always want our threads to fill out a value of zero to one and we want to fill that in completely, we just need, we just know we need to divide one by whatever this total number is right here. So if I set our weave back to where we were at before, which was 50, and we look at our copy total number is 100. We know that we just need one over 100 to fill it all the way out to one. And in this case, that's 0.01. So that's cool. So we just grab this. I'm going to right click on the total number and say copy parameter. Come down here and say paste relative references. And then I'm just going to put in front of it, I'm going to put one divided by so that it's one over the relative reference that we just chose. And now if we go to our weave, and we adjust the frequency, you can see that it's not that it's that it's actually adjusting how many threads are woven in between. If I come back down here and we show our sweep, we can really kind of see that working in action. So it's it's just adjusting how many curves there are and how tight they are to actually satisfy this weave in that direction. Now it's not working for this direction. If we go over to our second weave that we have right here and adjust it, we need to fix this one as well. So basically it's the same thing, but the opposite. So on this, so on the left hand copy, we need to adjust this total number by the frequency of whatever's going on over here. So let's right click and say copy parameter on the right hand weave, go to the left hand copy and say right click paste relative references. So we should have that frequency in here. And then we actually want to multiply it by two, which is what we did before. Like so. So that's handling the total copy number. And then we need to do the same thing here where we divide one by whatever this total number is right here. So we're going to right click this parameter and say copy parameter, go down to this X translate, select it all and say paste relative references and just put the one divided by in front like so. 
So now when we adjust this weave, we should see it tightening and spacing out accordingly. So if we zoom all the way out and let's just reduce the resolution maybe to uh, 0.03, something like that. And let's turn off the delete and we can see our total weave put together like so. Maybe I'll add a little color here. I'm gonna just throw it on a color node and we'll just wire this in on the left hand side and choose this nice purple color maybe. And then let's just alt drag that off to the right and choose a nice light blue color for the other axis. And you can kind of see how we've got that nice weave going on there looking pretty cool. I'm just going to go over here and set, let's set our weave back to 50 frequency of 50 here on the left hand side, frequency of 50 on the right hand side. And I'm just going to tighten this up here. Let's throw this underneath and throw it on a null and call this weave. And that'll sort of be the end of this first section here on one dimensional weaving. And next we can look at what two dimensional weaving gets us. Thank you for checking out the free preview lesson to legendary threads. If you want access to the full course, head over to mfxlabs.com or click the link in the description. Even if you only have beginner level Houdini knowledge, this course is designed to deliver advanced concepts in a way that everyone can follow along with chapter by chapter project files included. First, we'll cover basic theory through simple weaving and knitting examples as we build our own threading rig from scratch in VEX. Then we'll take that knowledge into the production realm by building a highly detailed knit pattern with shockwave animation that holds up in wide, medium, and close-up shots. Along the way, we'll cover a ton of critical Houdini skills from basic trigonometry to matrix animation, performance optimization, rendering, and beyond. This course also includes USD files of a shoe that I modeled and animated from scratch, ready to render in Solaris and Karma XPU that you can use in your personal projects. I am so excited to finally be able to share this knowledge with the world. Sign up now and start your Houdini weaving journey today.